Hi everyone, this is YC. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic UIs and functions of Partigo. Interface, you will see a side panel here where we have content manager. And at the bottom here, you will see many different attributes, which is document, media. And so these are different functions which stores all the resources. In the large panel here, you will see the top ribbon here where control the management level of the uh, technical writing workflow. So dashboard itself has all the for admin to review whether the output is up to the point. And then for planners, this is one of the translation tasks which we can use to plan out. And then this one is layout editor. So layout is a way for us to separate our writing content and making formatting adjustment separate task. And then layout also help us to create different branded front page of each manual. So we have something that is more generic and there is something very tied to the product. So inside the layout configuration editor, you will have a side panel which you control whether or not you want to have a front page and different orientation about the document. So it's basically metadata in a PDF um, document, if you think about it. The layout configuration control all the numbering and whether or not you want to capitalize the topic itself and how many levels of number you want to give for a subtopic inside a, a, a larger topic. This is the main editor section where you will start to be able to do some minor edit. This ribbon here is the function tab. One thing that is very usually used is the preview tab in this ribbon. This is where you can set profile settings. And profiles is the document output strategy, which I will talk about later. Another thing that's worth notice is this thing. Is, this is called menu bar. Sometimes people also call it breadcrumb. And this basically constitutes a different level of the elements. Say, for example, if now I add a, um, a figure, for instance, you do command, enter, and then figure. So yeah, as you can see now, we are inside a larger section and then inside a figure. Then in the figure, there is a media object, Im image object and image data. So this is basically a structure of XML elements. And then on the left right hand side here, there are five different additional panel. The most useful one is the element attribute. This is where we add additional function. So let me give you an example. For example, I'm doing a, I don't know, so Mac instruction. So this will be a specific for Mac, um, Mac OS. And um, if I copy this one, if I do a copy and do a paste, and I want, want to change this to a, I don't know, Windows, Windows, Windows instruction. So in a output document, ideally we want it to just show either Mac or Windows. So what we do is to add a, just always itself. And then you can start it to add value. Say Mac, sorry, Mac. Okay, this is one. And if we add another value called Windows, Linux, and then since I was just selecting the Mac one, I can apply for a specific um, section. I would like to just point out that there's there's actually various section you can apply these element attribute to. So you can also apply to te uh, um, the title element, for instance. You can also just apply to the image data element. So yeah, for this one, it will be Windows apply. Say for example, this title here, it has no attribute assigned. It will just show it every single document. So that's like the generic information that's needed for every single one. So this is the um, XML tree view. Like I said, each, each so this breadcrumb ba basically give you a menu structure. You can sort of move stuff around or just, I don't know, like move, move um, parameter into the title if you want to quickly add stuff. And this is reuse text. So reuse is in Paligo a very unique function. I will give you an example. If there is any artifact, and then I search. Okay, say for instance this one. 
you can select to either reuse fragment or just insert content without any reuse. The good thing about reusing a content is because when you have like this segment, um, this very generic text and you want to change across all uh, documents, um, because it is reused, so if you change it one place, it would then sort of downstream changing all topics. So this is useful. But then you sort of need to evaluate whether or not reusing um, is the right strategy at the point of writing. So another th important thing to note is that so you now see a chain icon and a green box. This is because we are reusing context from a different topic. But then, say for example, if I quickly add a paragraph element here and I want to reuse this one in the same, so I go to copy and then go into the middle part here, you can, you can do shift option V. This now you see a red box with the chain element. This means the, um, this element is reused within the same document. So there's these differences here, which is important to note, note down. But if you want to change it, you sort of need to edit reuse fragment. There are. See, it will change altogether at the same time. It is important for you to judge like whether or not to reuse or not reuse. So we have, we have come across many points where like actually reuse is not, not a good strategy. There's a way to disable reuse. If you just go to the element here and then disable reuse. And then in this case, say if I change this back to there is, see, so there is no yeah. reuse now. However, this one is still reused from other, other element. So the next tab here, this is a very quick widget documentation in Paligo where it sort of just give you the definition of XML element. And then another one is validation. So validation is a way for us to validate the structure of the content. Every time you click a command save, this whole set of topic will be validated once um, against their schema. We can change this validation rule by going to the icon here. You can untick these, but then it is not recommended because we want to make sure the documents are actually stable. So yeah, but for like very quick edits, if you want to um, disable it, there's an option there. Go into the three dots here and then create content. And at the point of creating content, you can create different types of content. Say for example, warning notice um, important. These will have specific render box outside of the actual text. You can also add informal topic. So informal topic is any topic that just does not have title. And then topic is the most used, used one, which has a title and the content itself. Now that we have a editor view, but what you can also do is to also open these uh, resource with a different view. Say for example, with a review view. At the review you, view, you sort of have a much more like succinct outlook of the topic but then you can only give uh, comments here. If you want to edit, you need to enter edit mode. And then another important thing is the translation view. So this is translation editor. You will have different languages uh, translated side by side. In terms of translation procedure, there's another video created already, which I'll refer for the next time.